is going on everyone? My name is Jack Southall and of course it is time for the WWE Hell in a Cell 2015 review and to be honest with you, I thought this was a fantastic show. Just from top to bottom, there was not one single bad match on this show. Everything was just perfect. There were a few things here and there that kind of dropped it off, but besides that, everything just fucking brilliant. So, um, we'll talk about the pre-show first, which of course was a rematch on Raw. Dolph Ziggler, Cesaro and Neville versus Rusev, Sheamus and Keaton Barrett. I didn't see this match, but I heard a lot about Cesaro and he just fucking killed it throughout this match. He did a lot of uppercuts and he did a, on King Barrett, he swung around a couple of times. Dolph Ziggler hit the zigzag, I believe, beforehand and then Neville did a beautiful friggin' red arrow and the babyface scored the win like I predicted. Um, from what I saw, I just saw the little bit they showed during Hell of a Cell and I thought it was pretty good. A lot of people said it was a fun match, so um, you know what, I, I, I'll just say it was good. Um, then we open up the show with the John Cena United States Open Challenge. Of course, we all know Cena's losing the US title, but to who, we don't know. Um, and then suddenly Zeb Coulter comes out in his little scooter, it was adorable. He comes out with a big beard and he's like, listen here Cena, I'm not someone that can take that title from you. And I uh, accept all cultures and all that. Since when did he accept all cultures? Weren't you like against Mexicans sneaking across your border or whatever? And he said that his um that the guy who's going to take him on is Alberto Del Rio of all fucking people. Alberto Del Rio. Um, I I had heard things that he wasn't going to be with Lucha Underground anytime soon, but fuck, dude, like. Did not expect that. And with Zeb Coulter, like, these two have had a history before. They feuded with each other at, Rus like at WrestleMania 29 and all that when Zeb Coulter was with Jack Swagger and Del Rio was, like, all Mexican and all that. So, yeah, Alberto Del Rio took on John Cena. And a uh, fairly, fairly good match, you know. Cena did his usual stuff in here. Nice to see Del Rio come back and do his um, stuff we haven't seen in a while. But um, how this ended was just a kick to the face, and Alberto Del Rio is your new United States champion, just like that. Um, yeah, so overall, overall, pretty good match, but I felt the uh, finish was just a little bit weak. I think they could have done something better, maybe like the cross-arm break, but then again, Cena doesn't tap, so that wouldn't happen. Um, but they could do some... So yeah, maybe like a couple of kicks to the head, maybe, so it can look like Cena's actually injured and needs to take some time off, but, you know, it's okay. Del Rio, he's United States champion. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with him in the near future. I hope they just don't book him like shit, and they should just book him as Del Rio, just like Norm Del Rio, um, and sort of like the cars and the luxury and all that stuff. I remember like two years ago when he faced Cena at Hell in a Cell, um, I wanted Cena to beat Del Rio because his character was so boring, so... Yeah, uh, all props to Del Rio, congrats, welcome back, and uh, let's see how this US title reign goes. Then we get a Hell in a Cell match, Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt, and this match kicked ass, man. Um, they had a little promo package at the start, it was really cool, um, lots of crazy spots. Um, Bray Wyatt like hung a chair on the Hell in a Cell, and I think it was a rebound, and he flung into the chair and all that. And um, there was a lot of table spots as well, like Bray Wyatt and Roman were on the apron and Bray like slammed Roman through one of the tables and um, there was another table spot, I think it was like Bray Wyatt was going to go for like a superplex on Roman, but Roman ducked out and um, hit the power bomb through the table. Then um, the third table spot, I believe, was um, like they were both on the apron and Roman did a six spear off it. And they both landed right through the table. It was pretty damn awesome. Um, and there was a bit where I think this was like the ending bit. Um, there was like a little um, series of moves at the end where like um, Bray Wyatt went for Sister Abigail, but Roman went for a roll up. But um, he kicked out and did the Superman punch for it. It's pretty cool. And then I believe like Bray had like two um, kendo sticks like sticking out of the post. And he's going to throw um, Roman into it, but Roman ended up. Uh, 
grabbing the singing ball cane and whacking uh, Bray a couple of times, and then he like threw him into um, the one that was sticking out. It was painful, and I believe he hit the spear of the Superman punch, and he ended up getting the victory. And um, yeah, I gotta give it up. These two had a awesome match. Um, really, really good, surprisingly enough. Um, yeah, like, those two went at it, you know. For a match that I thought would be pretty damn good, they pulled out all the stops. Great stuff between those two. Bray Wyatt looked awesome, and Roman Reigns, I gotta give you props, man. I give you shit all the time for being Mr. Cocker's Fist. Uh, but you were awesome in this match, dude, and uh, when you're awesome, I, I can easily get behind you. So, Roman Reigns... Keep up the good work, buddy, and um, yeah, great match from these two. Next up, we have a tag team championship match. We have uh, the New Day taking on the Dudley Boys, and um, New Day played up this whole thing about Xavier Woods getting the shit kicked out of him by Dudley Boys, and how um, he's in the back, and the whole little unicorn thing, and um, they have on their arms, like, XW, um, kind of like, um, remember when Eddie Guerrero passed away, and they had the wristbands on for him, so like, praying and hoping he's alright, and he's doing the unicorn horn thing in order for Xavier, and they got the trombone out for him and all that, um, yeah, it was pretty cool, um, so yeah, um, not the best tag team match in the world, but it's still very entertaining, to say the least, um, um, at the end, Bubba and Devon were gonna go for like the 3D or whatever, but, um, I and before then, Bubba, like, snapped, like, the trombone, and Kofi just had a fit. But then, um, while the referee was distracted, Big E, like, came in and smashed them with the, uh, trombone. Kofi hit the trouble in paradise, and they retained their tag team titles in clean fashion without Xavier. Good job, Big E and Kofi. New day rocks, indeed. Um, like I said before my predictions video, this is going to end up probably in a 5-on-5 five -five Survivor Series match, and then at TLC, the other tables match, and that's where the Dudley boys will win the titles. Um, next up, we have a surprisingly good Divas Championship match, Charlotte versus Nikki Bella. Um, the stipulation was that no Divas could be allowed at ringside, and um, they, played a little, they actually played a promo package for Charlotte and Nikki Bella, which was uh, pretty interesting. And um, yeah, they had a pretty damn good match for like, uh, main roster standards. This was very, very good. Um, Nikki held her own in this. Of course, Charlotte held her own. They did like this um, spot where um, was it? It was kind of like a superplex or some sort of thing off the top rope, and it looked like uh, Charlotte, uh, Charlotte, someone like landed on Nikki's back, which looked brutal. But actually, she didn't. So that's all good. And then there's a bit where like Nikki Bella did the Alabama slam onto like this apron of the ring, which looked brutal, honestly. Um, yeah, both of these girls just went at it, but, um, of course, how it ended, Charlotte hit in the, uh, figure eight leg, leg lock, she did a couple of times, but, um, she ended up roll, almost like in a roll up and then doing it, and, uh, Nikki Bella, she's going all over the place, but she taps out, she can't handle it, Charlotte is still the Divas champion, and good match between these two, Nikki Bella, that's probably the best, best match I've seen of her, so, uh, yeah. Good job to you two. Um, I'm hope hopefully Charlotte moves on to uh, other opponents and Nikki Bell and Brie Bella to do something. And um, of course there was Becky Lynch and Paige just decides to help out. Since when did Paige start liking Charlotte and Becky? Like I swear, last week she just talked a bunch of shit about Charlotte and Becky, and now she's friends with them again. Like what the. Fuck, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But that was my small little nitpick when it came to this pay-per-view like that. I didn't dig. But um, overall, good match between these two girls. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with Charlotte in the near future. Um, next match, we have Seth Rollins versus Kane for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. If um, Demon Kane lost, Corporate Kane would be fired from his role as Director of Operations. And, um, yeah, it wasn't the worst match ever, but Seth Rollins has definitely been through much better matches. This is probably the best match you can get out of these two guys with Kane's age and all that. And Rollins did his best to make it as good as possible. And it was fairly decent, you know. This would have been a really good match if it was on Raw or something like that. But since this was on pay-per-view, you know, this was fine. Like, Kane tried his best to hold his own in this. But um, how it ended 
was just Seth Rollins hitting the pedigree and beating him clean. No bullshit finish, which was awesome to see. I'm really happy that um, Seth Rollins actually got a clean victory for once. And like before the match, he's like, I'm not scared of you, Kane, and beats him up. I'm like, yeah, that's the Seth I want to see. So, uh, yeah, good job, Seth. You're fucking awesome. Um, thumbs up to, to those guys. And Kane, he did fairly well. He tried his hardest to put on as be best of a match as he could. Just Kane, probably just time to hang up the boots, man. I really hope so. And that's not me trying to be a dick. That's like... Honestly, like, retire now as you can, but then again, he could get involved in the Undertaker thing, which I'll talk about later on, but, yeah, Seth Rollins, you kicked ass, and this match was fairly de decent. So, um, then we get Kevin Owens versus Ryback for the Intercontinental Championship, and, um, yeah, this was fairly decent as well. Um, Kevin Owens uh, came out as the IC Champion, of course, Ryback didn't really get a good reception from the crowd, this crowd ate up Kevin Owens throughout this entire match. Um, there was a lot of cool spots in this. Um, he went to go for a pop-up powerbomb, but then Ryback hit, like, some... his, like, his little, um... Fuck, I forgot the move. Um, but then, uh... Ryback went to do the, uh, you know, finish it bit, put the straps down, hits a shell shot. Kevin Owens gets out of it and then hits the pop-up powerbomb, gets a win. Uh, a very quick match between these two. Um... Could have expected better, but I was fine with it. Um, it was a decent enough match. Kevin Owens is still a champion, so that's all that matters. Fight, Owens, fight. Go, go, mate. And then it's time for the big main event. The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar for the final time inside Hell in a Cell. Um, and boy, oh boy, these two guys go at it, man. Like, there was blood... Throughout this match, trust me, as in today's day and age, that was probably like the bloodiest match in the history of the PG era, probably, because, man, Brock got busted open, Undertaker got busted open, not like covered, like the entire back, but a, a good amount of it was covered in blood, and the little pussy fart doctors came in and had to check, oh, I gotta clean the okay, I gotta clean the blood. And like, there was a bit where like Brock Lesnar was getting pissed off because he's like, oh, I gotta check it. And Brock's like, fuck off. <laughs> and torches the doctor out of the ring. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, but yeah, these two just killed each other, man. Just all over the place. Um, a highlight for me, definitely a highlight, was um, when Brock started tearing up the, um, the padding for the ring, um, you know, like, the curtain for the ring, no, not the ring curtain, but, um, yeah, you know, like, the padding of the ring, where it's, like, bluish kind of stuff, whatever, he rips it up, he gets rid of the sponge underneath it, and it's just pure planks of wood, um, Undertaker then picks up Brock and hits the tombstone pile driver, he completely misses it, but, like, <laughs> We pretend to see that he did get it. I remember a bit... Oh, but there was also a bit where, like, Undertaker threw Lesnar into, like, the um, post. And his, and his hand definitely um, hit that. But he still did a blade job as well. So, whatever. But um, then Brock got up and he hit the F5 and actually landed it on the, on the uh, boards, on the uh, wooden planks, which looked brutal to watch. I can't imagine how painful that would be. But um, Brock Lesnar gets the cover, he wins the match. Brock Lesnar has solidified himself as a superstar. One of the greats of all time, man. And um, Undertaker gives him like a little salute at the end. Taker gets up, everyone's clapping, saying thank you, Taker. But I, I knew something was going down because I checked the time and it was like, like 10 minutes left of the pay-per-view. So I'm like, alright, what's going on here? Um, and they also advertise something for Survivor Series, and I need someone for Undertaker to face, because it's the whole 25 years of Undertaker debuting at Survivor Series 1990. And so who comes out? The White family. All four members, Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, uh, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan, all four of them come out. They surround Undertaker, and they beat the shit out of him after he's had an epic war, and just, they all carry him out, and... We don't know what's happened to The Undertaker. Uh, maybe he's getting manipulated and joining the Wyatt family. How crazy would that be? Or maybe this will lead to like a four-on-four -four elimination match at Survivor Series. Like the Wyatt family versus Undertaker. 
probably Kane and two other fucks as well. So, um, which would be pretty cool to see. I think that'd be a decent enough, you know, um, main event for, um, Survivor Series. I feel like if they can build it up well, it could be pretty good. Find Seth Rollins on the face, like Cesaro. I think that'd be really, really cool. Um, yeah, so Raw should be pretty exciting tomorrow. A lot of new feuds should get started. Taker and Wyatt, they're going to do something. Rollins is going to have to find a new opponent. Uh, Rain, Roman Reigns is going to have to find a new opponent. Um, Kevin Owens, maybe. Charlotte, maybe. And, of course, Del Rio is going to have to find someone for his US title. So, yeah, we should see a lot of new feuds to build up to Survivor Series, which is pretty exciting. So, um... Yeah, this is going to be it for this video. Oh, I haven't said my match of the night. My match of the night will probably be Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. Um, there are a lot of good matches. Uh, Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt is definitely a number two. Those guys tore it up. But Taker and Wyatt... No, Taker and Lesnar. Blood, brutality, loved it. That's what Hell in the Cell should be. How do I rate this? This was actually a really great pay-per-view. I loved it. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. I think that's a decent enough thing. Um, yeah, so that's what I thought of Hell in a Cell. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to leave a big fat like if you did. Comment down below what you thought of Hell in a Cell. Did you enjoy it? You didn't enjoy it? What was your favourite match? Anything like that. Um, if you want to see more content from me, make sure to hit the subscribe button wherever it is. Um, tomorrow, of course, is the Raw review, which I'm pretty keen for. And uh, Wednesday is my birthday, so I'll be doing like a pickups video. Or, well, not really a pickups, but like showing you what presents I got and all that. You know, um, and then I've got the Elgato game capture card, which is going to be one of my presents. And I might do like a few videos testing it out and all that. And of course, 2K16 comes out on Thursday, so I'll be definitely um, doing a pickup and review on that. And um, also, by the way, guys, thank you for 50 subscribers. I know that's not really a lot. But for me, that's pretty friggin' cool to have reached 50 subscribers. So if you're one of the one of the 50 subscribers watching this video, thank you so much. You guys are friggin' awesome. And um, yeah, if you want to check me out on Twitter and Instagram, it's at JackamanLol31. A lot of good stuff is coming soon, guys. So uh, thanks for checking me out. Thank you, 50 subscribers. You're friggin' amazing. And I am out in 3, 2, 1. Oh. Let's do it again. Three, two, one.